and you can turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 25. I'm just going to throw this out there for all the non-dispensational people that don't understand Scripture. They'll try to say to you that uh, salvation has always been by faith alone. Always eternal security. Faith, just you get saved by grace through faith and uh, you have eternal security and that's, that's, it's always been that way and it will always be that way. I'm going to show you that Jesus Christ Himself rejects that. All right? Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, and then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. Is there any doubt of who this is? Jesus Christ, when He comes back. This is called the judgment of the nations. Verse 32. And before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And He shall set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Okay? They're going into the millennial kingdom, in other words. You with me so far? Now look how he judges them. How he judges these people if they're saved or lost. Look at this. Verse 35. For I was hungered and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then the righteous, uh, answer, then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When see, saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Where's faith mentioned? Where's belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ on the cross? Where's that mentioned? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, the gospel which I preached unto you. Where's it mentioned? It's not. You say, well, it's assumed. They're saved and therefore they're doing good works. Okay, then the opposite of that would be, see? Then people that didn't do those things, the Lord should say something about, and you didn't even believe in me. You didn't believe in my death, burial, and resurrection, you know, on the cross, right? So let's look at the second group. Verse 41, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. <laughs> Boom, they're going to hell. For I was hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Uh, sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Where is faith mentioned? Where is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the, and the cross, and the blood, and everything? Where is it mentioned? 100% pure works. What are you going to do with that? Well, I just think that you're a heretic, Denlinger. I think that you're crazy and you're... What are you going to do with this? You don't want to know why faith isn't mentioned? Well, you can turn to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Are they seeing Jesus Christ? In Matthew chapter 25? Uh-huh. You say, well, yeah, but before then. Okay. Let me show you another one. Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10, verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. Towards the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, the mystery of God is finished. There's no more question. There's, no more, there's not going to be any atheists at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. People are plainly seeing what God is doing. The book of Revelation is confirmed. That's why people are willing to die for the word of God, the written word of God. You can read about that in Revelation chapter 6, with the fifth seal being opened. And there's no more faith, you see. 
And then you have an even worse problem if you go into the millennial kingdom. How are people saved then? Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. How can they be saved by faith, by grace through faith? They're not. They can see him. Okay? There are some real simple things about Scripture that you can understand without going into real, real, real in deep, in-depth, deep study. But see, non-dispensationalists, um, being lost as they are, um, they have no understanding of Scripture and how to rightly divide the word of truth and how to exposit certain Scriptures. That's why they come along and they just sloppily say, well, the whole thing's for me. You know, I mean, you go to a hardware store and you go into an employee and you say, uh, where could I find the screwdrivers? Well, they're in the store someplace. It's just the whole, the whole store, you know, whatever. Just look for the whole store. See, that's a sloppy employee. You come into another employee and you say, oh, excuse me, where are the screwdrivers at? They say, okay, you see back there towards that, there's a sign there. It says for the restrooms. Okay, right beside that is aisle number three. Walk back to aisle number three. It's about, uh, probably about four feet from the end of the aisle there on your left. Okay, that's where the screwdriver display is at. And you walk back and right there it is. Right division. You come back to the employee and you say, um, okay, I, I need to know where the light bulbs are. Okay, that would be aisle number one over there. Okay, you see it right there? You see the lights shining? We have them plugged in? So, yeah, okay. Um, okay, good. Where's the um, uh, glue at? Woodworker's glue. Okay, that's up here in aisle number 12 with the woodworking equipment. Or right division of Scripture, you see? Hey, dispensational believer, what's Matthew chapter 25 for? A Jew in the ending in the time of Jacob's trouble and going into the judgment of the nations, which takes him into the millennial kingdom. Non-dispensationals. What's Matthew chapter 25 for? Christians. It's all for us. Uh, okay. Um, the book of Hebrews? For Christians. Millennial kingdom? For Christians. It's a, uh, Christians all the way through. The, uh, Genesis? Uh, Garden of Eden? Oh, that's, it's Christians. Yeah, they're Christians. They believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Don't fall for the non-dispensational lies. Uh, they are lost. You can't rightly divide the word of truth. Um, how are you going to understand the gospel? Okay? And the Holy Spirit's not going to lead somebody into being non-dispensational. So, that is going to be it. Please don't be deceived by non-dispensational. All you got to do, brethren, just tell you, you hear somebody, they say, I'm non-dispensational or I'm against the dispensational teaching. Don't even give them any time. Um, to whom we gave place by subjection? No, not for an hour. Paul writes in the book of Galatians. Don't waste your time on them. Thank you for watching.